right. What's the word? What's the word? Man, it's our uh, small talk uh, podcast, episode 23. Uh, man, I got a, a, dope, a dope artist for y'all today. Um, this guy here I met um, dancing, but I come to find out I didn't know he was an artist. And like outside of dancing, like he was he was good at painting and drawing. And he took this thing to the next level, man. All right. So I got I, is this Azaria. Azaria, how you say it? Azaria. Isaiah King, man, what's up with you, brother? Ah, uh, nothing much. Just enjoying this old quarantine uh, lifestyle. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a lifestyle now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Man, it's good to have you on, man. Um, I like I was letting uh, the, for people that don't know, he is the first, my first painter, uh, artist, like drawer, you know, like all that good stuff. Like most of the people I had was choreographers and. Um, musicians and producers poets and he also say he he does poetry too so um yeah let's 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 go ahead and get started on for us like how i know you like first time i met you man you came to a crump session and mm -hmm. uh i don't know how you got there i mean that's what, that's for you to say but you was there and we i don't know we always just come up with names like for people that we don't know like we called you neo <laughs> yeah we used to call you neo because you wear this hat a certain kind of how I don't know what kind of hat it is, but I guess like a top hat. You wore like a hat every time you crump, and uh, so we just called you Neo because we you, you reminded us of Neo, like your style, like the way you dress reminded us of Neo. So, how did so, how did how was that, man? Your first time like coming to a session, a dance session, was that was that your first time, or you always been to some? It was actually my first time, actually. Somebody had told me that, uh Somebody had told me that somebody called me out to battle over uh, Facebook. Right. And, uh, this was years ago. Yeah. And so um, one of my, I had posted it on uh, Facebook and I said I had my first uh, dance battle and stuff like that. And somebody asked me who I was going up against. Uh -huh. And he said that I was going up against uh, Lolo or something like that. And so that was who called me out. So, uh, <laughs> Came out to the session. Right. Uh, I saw you and a few other people, a few, few other people there that I uh, that I still mess with to this day. Yeah, for uh, real. it was around the time I was actually uh, I had just stopped dancing for, for a professional dance company uh, called Matisse. Oh, Matisse. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so I was still looking to kind of like stay stay on the scene, stay in the community, and uh, that that those crump sessions definitely provide, provided me with the opportunity right and so um i i had came up with the name of I, it was my poet name at the time uh which was a uh, black diamond oh yeah and so, yeah so uh it's a tight name though oh yeah and so i i got there met uh saw you i think you were kind of like uh one of the uh you were like highly respected, uh, definitely dope in your craft. You still dope in your craft. Uh, and so I think uh, you were you were one of the first people to stand out uh, to me, but I kind of, ne I never really, like, we never really spoke. Right, right, um, right. But I was kind of like on this, uh, this like shy thing or whatever, because I, I thought, you know, like you were just like all the way up here and I was just like, you know, <laughs> like, I had to like earn the respect to like hang out with you or whatever. Or, That's what's up. So it's just it it was just a relationship that progressed over time, and then we got connected via social media. Stay connected that way. Right. We've been and, we've been connected on Facebook since then, man. And oh yeah, you know, like uh, you did. Uh, well, we gonna get into it. So after um, dancing and trying it out, how long you been doing like art, like art in general? I've been doing art for as long as anybody my age has been alive, really? practically. Um, it's Talk been about like the first time, like the first time you tried it out. First time I tried it out, I was in first grade. Um, there was this kid in my dance class who could draw really nice, and or at least really nice by our standards, because you know none of us other first graders could draw. Right. And so he drew a picture of this werewolf howling at the moon, and he was just like a like a 
what what you would call a wolf man, I guess. Mm. Uh, his upper body was like a humanoid, but he had a wolf's head, and he had on like a pair of blue jeans or whatever. And he was just howling with a haunted house in the background, and I I liked it, so I just copied it. Right. And I didn't necessarily know that what I was doing was drawing. I thought it was just it was the, it was essentially the same to me as copying down like notes or copying down a poem or something like that. Mm. And so I took it, I drew it myself, and I just been drawing ever since. Uh, started off as animals and monsters and superheroes, and then I got into doing people. And mm. so um, once I got into high school, I started actually uh, getting into an art club, and my and the art teacher there started challenging me to uh, to grow in my to grow in my craft, and uh, and it's just been nonstop ever since. Wow, so like, did you did you know you was as good as you was at you know when the teachers was noticing it, or did it was it like somebody was like, mm, I think I'm cool. Yeah, it was it was like more the more the latter. Um, it was just kind of I thought it was something that everybody could do until I realized that that wasn't necessarily the case. Mm. And so I remember getting a, a, my first art commission. I was in like maybe um, freshman freshman a freshman in high school, and I, I I remember I did this piece on like maybe an eighteen by twenty four post uh, sketch paper and I only charged like $30 at the time. And, <laughs> and, like I was literally like maybe 15 or 16. And so the guy that uh, commissioned me, it was, it was no problem for him to pay for uh, $30. He had his own construction company at the time. And I didn't know anything about charging for my work, but now for 18 by 24, you can't get that for $30. At this right, point. Not, not no more. <laughs> It's, it's, it's unrealistic, right? So, um, so yeah, it was. It's always been cool. It was always been something. It wasn't until I got to high school that I realized this was something that not everybody really did. good. Yeah, because I mean, I I did I did I was drawing in high school. I was drawing and stuff in elementary, and then like high school, you know, I learned a lot of things as far as like how to draw and paint and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I got some, I got some stuff myself, but I never was like, I never like took it that far. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I feel like if I took it that far, I could be really good, like really good at it. But I just, you know, like when you at the age, like teenage years, you trying to find new things and find things you're interested in. Like it was something I was good at, but I wasn't quite fully interested in kind of like dance, you know, like I wasn't into dance until I turned like 19, 20 years old. Like, I always just knew how to do it, but I ain't like, you know, I ain't trip off of it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, uh, and then I finally found something I can stick with and take it for. Um, but yeah, that's, that's amazing though, man. Um, besides, you know, like the, the growing process of your art, has it ever been a time like where you fell off, like as far as like your drive? In, in painting and drawing, or was it always something that you stuck with? I think the only time where it felt like I fell off was when I had got back to the States from uh, spending two months in um, in East Asia. Mm. And uh, I was over there on a mission trip, and I was uh, also studying at the, at, the, uh, un at the University of Technology over there. Mm. And... Um, when we got back to the States, like a, a, a depression just hit. Really? And yeah, so I had a I had a commission that took me like weeks and or or even months to finish because it was hard for me to push through it. And so I don't think I really got I don't think I really got really uh deep into it or or whatnot until maybe the following year, because even after that, I didn't even go back to college. Like, I didn't even go back to school. Um, I just um, went and found me a, a, another job. Like a regular, yeah, like a I job. went back to work, basically. Yeah. And and, uh, and that was pretty much it. And then at some point, I don't remember exactly when or how, but 
I found my way out of that depression and I found my way out of that uh, that funk and I started painting again. I, I think it happened when I painted this portrait called uh, uh, Fire and Ice. Mm. And it was a picture of one of my art models uh, from the backside and she was in a, um, she was just kind of like in a, uh, like in a kneeling position. She was just kind of like on both knees, her feet were behind, were, were behind her. And uh, she was just like facing the opposite direction. And so I, I looked at, I was just looking through pictures of fo photos of my references and I found that one and I was like, you know what? Let me, uh, let me see if I still got it. Mm. And uh, I tried to, cause before then I tried to paint something else. It just, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't feeling it. Wasn't yeah, it wasn't happening. Yeah. And so I got, got to that one and decided to try try it out and it it started to come back so it was about maybe 2016 um late 2016 when that happened and so and also I was kind of I was dealing with heartbreak too cuz I had gotten out of a relationship mm -hmm. over the two and so that that so that kind of um trickled into what caused the depression too now did the depression come from from uh, joining the military or? No, this was way before the military. This was a couple of years before um, okay. the army. So, I mean, the pre mm. In between? Yeah, I, I dealt with some, some depression in the army, but I think the only, t the only reason I, I wasn't able to do my art in the army was because I was in basic training. And yeah. all, all I had was like ink pens and, you know, maybe some, some, Printing paper or whatever. Right. So you couldn't you know, really go all out anyway. Right. Uh -huh. So, but that wasn't necessarily. I wouldn't call that a fall off. It was just uh, I was I didn't have the resources to be able to do what I wanted to do. Facts. So, so like that's why you know like that's why I always believe like art can help you get through things. You know what I'm saying? Especially in life. You know. Uh, mm -hmm like the most normal person that's not even into arts i guarantee if they find like some kind of art that they can be interested in and can really drive towards that it can really help them over shadow the depression sometime and mm -hmm. you know just like you said you know like your certain piece that you made helped you kind of get over that hump you know and really pushed you to go further with it, it can happen to a lot of people, you know, like if they can just put on some dancing shoes or sing in front of a microphone or draw on a piece of paper, paint on some paper. Like, right. I, I feel like art is life. Like I, I, I said this like on my episode too, but art is life. Like everything you need in life is art. Like art is, mm -hmm. plays a big factor. And a lot of people kind of like, some people be shy of they are. They know they're good at this, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's how I was. I knew I was good at dance or just whatever, but I kind of like too busy worried about what people think, you know what I'm saying? And uh, until you really sit down with yourself and reflect on what you really love, you know, just go forward. Right. So uh, another thing, who, who inspired you? Any You have any inspirations as far as? Yeah, it was uh my first inspiration, my first major inspiration was uh was a man who goes by the name of Wack. Uh his uh name how is you, uh how, how you spell that? W A K. Okay, W A K. So uh his his work is actually um very popular in uh in a black community. So it was like maybe twenty years ago or so when I started coming across his works, especially in Essence magazine and um ebony magazine where they would have this uh little, um this little postcard called black expressions or something like that sometimes this artwork would be featured in there and i would i would literally copy his work like every time every <laughs> time i saw it because right. uh it was the first time i had ever seen a black contemporary uh, artist RP and, oh yeah 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 uh -huh. and so i follow him now on instagram and I think when I first, when I was first able to follow him and found out that he was, you know, still going at it, still uh, kicking in and punching out works, 
I just I just had to DM him. I was like, hey, look, man, like I remember this one piece that I that I did of yours, and and it just really inspired me to keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, he was he was the biggest inspiration that I had coming up. But I think um, one of my uh, biggest inspirations now at this point are artists like you know John Moody and uh, Kababi uh, Kababi Bea. Um, Shout out to them. Shout out. Oh yeah. And so I tried to push myself in painting with in, in different styles. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of their, their pieces really challenged me to kind of like go outside of my norm. And so especially when it comes to color mixing, when it comes to color combinations and, and not just doing things like straight up traditional, mm -hmm. um, that's where I have my push. That's where I, I find my niche. And so <clears throat> it's, uh, it's just art, art that depicts the human body in, in, in ways that photographs never could. Mm. So I gravitate to artists that paint, that paint and stuff, not necessarily to people that just paint people how they are, the way they are, even though even though finding out how they blend colors into flesh tones is interesting, I still like the idea of painting people in a way that is more, in a way that pops, in a way that shows people themselves, in a way that looks like maybe some type of Snapchat filter or some type of a compu computer design or something like that. So it's uh, people get from me what they can't necessarily get from photographers or from other uh, digital artists, or a lot of other digital artists. So, so do artists like you, because um, this is your world, I, I'm not too sure, like, do y'all go by style? Like, y'all, do you have a certain style? Is it more? My style is always changing. Like, I think people know my work more so by my signature rather than my style. Mm. Um, and sometimes when I go go to my signature style and yeah people would definitely know like oh that's after our king's work or but um when i do something different the only way you know it's mine is my signature at the bottom gotcha and so you like you like to kind of just keep your mind open and come up with new stuff here and there not right. just not just stick to one type of look right yeah the, the best art i love is like a storytelling like you know, like a, a art piece that just look like it's deeper than just the picture itself. Mm -hmm. I, I seen like some pictures uh, of you and I'm gonna share it with everybody. Uh, I seen some pictures of you uh, that you done, uh, like with a mom and a daughter or, you know, like a father and his kids or something like that. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's deep. And, and most, of the, most of the, I can tell most of the, the art you present is like black art, you know, like what you would consider black culture black art type of style um mm -hmm. and and that's what's beautiful about the way you move man it's like you know our culture is something amazing you know and you can get so much from it and that's right. one thing i admire about your the way you paint and the way you draw i i appreciate that i, I think i try to paint as many black people as i can because like when you when when I'm on social media or when I'm on online or on Google or whatever, all you really see are like portraits of white people. Yeah. And so I try to um I try to put as many black faces at, uh, in my art as possible to the point where I have white people asking me, Can you draw can you paint white people? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like, oh, of like course that. I can paint white people. I just don't normally post. It's not like, what you prefer. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, though, yet I have yet to find uh, a white, you know, uh, reference or model or whatnot model, yeah. that you want to gravitate to. But even if I did, they wouldn't necessarily be painted as a white person. They would still be painted like in multiple colors like right like all right. of us are right right and that's uh that's kobe Bryant in the background right oh yeah it's uh i love 
work in progress that I got going going. That's tight. So now are you self taught or is it more so like you you was you as you grew into like different ways to paint and draw, you kind of found like it like you say your inspiration like uh whack like you kind of like see how he do it and then kind of just do it yourself or was somebody did somebody ever sit down with you and show you how to do this stuff right the only person that has ever sat down and showed me how to do something was my art teacher in high school mr hunt but even then he uh the amount of materials that he's uh introduced me to were were like ebony pencil and watercolors and um, it wasn't until like within maybe those three years that I was at Normandy Senior High School in St. Louis, um, those were the only mediums that I was using. Mm. Um, after that, I started actually, and I actually, I actually sucked at oil pastel at <laughs> high school. Like, I tried, I tried to do one portrait really? in oil pastel. It just didn't work. I, it just wasn't, it was not happening. Um, and so it wasn't until maybe a year after I graduated that I actually realized that I don't work, you're not supposed to work with color pencils. But then again, the way that I was working with color pencils wasn't the same way everybody else was working with color pencils. Mm. So it was just, uh, the way that I was layering the colors that prevented me from working with oil pastels the way that I would like to. And so once, uh, after oil, after I taught myself how to use oil pastels, I then taught myself how to use charcoal, uh, which was from um, having been in the figure drawing class at Flores and Valley Community College. And the thing was, the professor wasn't teaching me how to use charcoal. Mm. Just, you know, put a model on stage, they get naked, and we're supposed to draw them. And that, that was in college. Yeah, they had them be standing there naked. Yeah, that's you. You ever seen oh. them movies where you know naked naked person walks into a college oh, yeah. classroom? Yeah. yeah, that that's what that class be. Wow. It be a figure drawing class. Or they drawing must class. they must get paid to do that. Because <laughs> I was actually one of them at one point. Oh, you you had to pose naked one time. Yeah, it helped me understand the models that I wow. that have actually posted. So, so how did you feel like mentally? Was you like uncomfortable or what? It was uncomfortable. What my first session was uncomfortable because you know <laughs> I, I was I I was like uh I hope people don't think I ain't shower today because I'm a little ner- I'm a little, I'm sweating because I'm nervous. Right, right, right. All that stuff and and then one 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 time it was a there was a mix up in the um, modeling schedule. And there was another guy there on a day that I guess uh, I didn't get the cancellation notice or whatever, but um, we ended up both posing on the same stage. And this dude, he's like, he's more muscular than me. He's, he's bigger than me uh, in both contexts of the word. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I'm yeah. like, I'm yeah so um but uh it was it was definitely nerve-wracking i mean anytime a model poses for me i I let them know like hey i like i've been in your shoes Mm, and i definitely know how it feels and so um but aside from that (laughs) let me uh get back on track here uh yeah, the professor wasn't showing us how to use uh, charcoal. And so it wasn't until I got home and I I was no longer taking the class that I realized I'm going to try this my own way and try this with, you know, some random picture of a person. And I started, I started um, trying to arranged the uh the graphite of well not graphite but arranged the um the code on the paper in a way that would make sense and so i started learning that um soft char- soft charcoal and hard charcoal are very very different and vine charcoal is different from compressed charcoal 
If I wanted, you know, darker shadows, I had to use the compress. Mm -hmm. If I wanted, you know, medium tones, I had to use the vine. And if I wanted highlights, I had to use my eraser and shade with my eraser as well. So it wasn't necessarily like shading with a pencil or shading with your fingers and stuff like that. Even though essentially you were shading with your fingers, it was it was a whole different technique and a whole different approach than using ebony pencil. Because when I was shading with ebony pencil, like I learned how to shade with just the pencil and nothing else. And so after that, then came um, acrylic painting, acrylic and oils, and those I'm completely self-taught on. Like my first painting was crap, and the next two were crap but I kept at it. And so I think by the time I painted my third piece, that was when I started having an understanding of how to- How to do it. Yeah, yeah how to apply the- Don'ts and all that. Oh yeah. And so, but even then, I think by the time I got the hang of it, like I started producing better pieces, um, but the more that I do it, the more that I continue to grow and learning different ways of application, of applying the paint to canvas and, and learning different techniques of, and of, of how to apply, of how to create different textures and different effects. Mm. And so, I'm, so in, the, in the process of me learning how to do what other people do, my style is always changing. That's how it should be too. Definitely. Man, so that's tight. So I think I already got it. I um I always ask my guests um if they have any embarrassing moments in their life as far as in their art. That could have been one, the one that you pose the naked, but yeah. Unless, unless you got another one. I mean, um uh, I think the only other and embarrass like when it comes to art, like embarrassing yeah. moments. Yeah. Um something you can laugh at now. Well, so man, I so I was trying to take home a uh, a, a huge canvas and there was this uh, young lady that was um helping me do so. She had an SUV at the time and we tr we decided to strap the canvas on the top of her SUV. Oh. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I'm thinking we're gonna be good, you know, we're gonna make it home. But no, uh, we get on the highway and the canvas rips completely off the mm. top of the SUV. And I'm like frantic now because- You said the highway? Yes. Wow. Like we, we were on, I think, uh, Dang, I forget what highway we were on. We were on maybe 40, I think. We were on 40 or 55. But we got on that highway and that mud, that canvas snapped off it. And I was I was petrified because I didn't want it to get ran over by a car behind us. And so, cause that would have been that would have been tragic. You can't yeah. get tire marks out of a painting. Ooh. So um so luckily it flew into the grass and we had to like pull over on the shoulder of the highway. I ran back and and the the paint the canvas was still intact. Oh, it's okay. just the board frame was just it it shattered. Shattered. Yeah. yeah. So I had to roll the painting up and put it in the back seat and I took it to um to one of my art friends and he he uh, restretched it around a, a smaller board frame. But uh that was that was that was extremely embarrassing. One, I liked the girl, and I, you know, it kind of made me <laughs> feel like, like, like I didn't know what I was doing. Doing right. Yeah. So it was just that was embarrassing. It was it was very embarrassing for me. <laughs> All right, we at the closing point, man. Uh, you got any advice for like artists like you on, I guess, do's and don'ts, or just how to uh, continue with their journey? Well. I would say don't focus on the don'ts, but more so focus on the do's. And when you focus on the do's, you it'll kind of you it'll kind of create some tension and some friction within yourself when you start gravitating to a don't. 
Gotcha. And so, um, as far as the dudes go, not all the dudes are going to be your dudes because there's no cookie cutter sheet on how to be an artist, on how to paint, how to draw, how to how to create whatever it is you want to create. Like the whole key to being an authentic artist is creating the way that you are like create like authentically and so however it does not mean don't take you know recommendations or suggestions or or any uh pointers from other artists but it does mean like stay true to yourself um and if anybody has something to offer you that you want to learn take it and you know mold it into whatever you want it to become but um Never, I would say there is one don't that I would that I would put. Never think yourself the best artist in the room, or mm-hmm. better than any of the other artists that you might actually be more advanced than in, in, in your skill set. Because in the process of thinking that, you will be humbled very quick. Quick, quick when you see someone. And, like oh yeah. And so there will always be a better artist. There will always be someone who is more advanced than you. There was always be there will always be someone that you can learn from. Um, so there's that. Also, if you want to be profitable, if you want to make your art profitable, you have to know your audience. You have to um, be caught. You have to be um, considerate of how you promote your art. And you also have to be personable. You have to be a person that is th- that is sociable, that, that people can actually get, like, talk to. Right, and, right. and also, don't, uh, don't, lowball your, don't lowball your prices. Don't lowball yourself. You got to find out your value, and it's not going to come just like that. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with your work and your craft, and your value will come to you over time. So Word. there's a whole lot more that I could offer, but um, if anybody, if any anybody wants to know anything more uh, than what I've given here, then they can always follow me on social media and message me th- there or email me, uh, ask me for my contact information or whatever the case. Right. Good segue, man. So how can they follow you? What's your uh, handle? Um, my handle on Instagram is uh, Azariah underscore King. Gotcha. Uh, that's probably never going to change. And you can also they can also find me on social media at Sir Israel Azariah King. That's my artist page. And you know, you can like it, check out the work. Um, my price lists are on there as well. I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop your price list too. I got I got uh one of your most recent ones. So I'm okay on there as well. And so, um, and they can also find me on, uh, where can they find me on? They can find me on Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Facebook at uh, Azariah King. Word. All right, so. brother, brother. Man, good seeing you again, man. And uh, You too, man. You look good. You been eating, uh, eating all right over there? Yes, sir. I'm eating too much. <laughs> uh, shoot, it ain't, it ain't showing. <laughs> But uh, it's good to have you on, man. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, keeping keeping this art art podcast rolling, man. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe and um, Arts and Small Talk podcast. Uh, you can. This is gonna be on YouTube, so you can start finding me on YouTube and start doing some YouTube videos. Uh, also, Instagram Arts underscore N letter N Small Talk podcast. Uh, make sure you uh, you know share it. Tell your friend, tell a friend, your mama, your daddy, your sister, brother, cousin, auntie, niece. Um, you know, I'm on uh, all platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, whatever you want to have it on, it's on there. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. Thanks again, my brother, man. Big no, dap no to problem. you. All right, Joe. I'll see you, you later, man. Holla. All right.